In this video, I'm going over 10 things that you need to stop doing immediately on your iPhone. Chances are most of you watching this are guilty of doing just a few of these, and these apply to all iPhones as well. So let's roll the intro and jump in. Number one, you need to stop killing the applications in the background on your iPhone. I have a friend who every time he finishes using an application, instead of just swiping to go home, he first goes into multitasking and then kills the application like this. Many people think that if you have a bunch of apps open in the background, this is what's going to slow down your iPhone, but in fact, it's the opposite of this. The iPhone has really good memory management and it's able to put all of these applications into a low power state. So when you launch an application from scratch, it's actually going to use more resources from the CPU inside your phone and in turn that can actually reduce your battery life and make your applications launch a lot slower. So take Twitter for example. If I open it, you can see it opens right away because it was already open in the background. If I kill the application and then open it, you can see we have to go through this entire loading screen first. So just keep your apps open throughout the day. I'd maybe recommend closing them out uh, maybe once at the end of every single day, but you certainly don't need to kill your apps after every single use. Number two, you need to stop using a non MFI certified iPhone charging cable. MFI stands for made for iPhone and obviously the cable that came in the box with your iPhone when you got it new is MFI certified since it's made by Apple, but you can also find MFI certified cables from other third party sellers as well. The reason you want to use an MFI certified cable is because they all have a built in microchip and this microchip is going to protect the battery health of your iPhone and it's going to prevent things such as power surge and overheating. So if you take a non MFI certified cable, like the cheap little $1 ones that you find at a gas station, those can potentially damage the battery health of your iPhone. And you may have found yourself that when you use a really cheap cable, your iPhone gets really hot when you're using it. So my recommendation is to use an MFI certified cable, preferably the one that came in the box with your iPhone. Number three, inside the camera application, you need to stop reaching all the way to the top of the screen to control your camera. This is actually a hidden menu in the camera app. And if you swipe up, you can reveal all of the controls for the camera within a thumbs reach. So everything that you want to control in the camera is here. So flash, live photos, photographic styles, aspect ratio, exposure control, timer, filters, and also raw. So there's absolutely no need to reach all the way to the top of your iPhone with a simple thumb swipe. You can have all of the controls available to you in the camera app right here. Number four, you need to stop allowing applications to access your location all the time. I'd recommend going into settings and then click on privacy and security and then location services at the top. So check for any applications in here that are using your location always. So the only one that I have is weather. And that's because when I'm on my home screen, I always want to see the latest weather data. I was really surprised when I looked at my friend's phone, just how many applications were using his location all the time. Not only is this a privacy issue, but it can also drain your battery as well because the GPS is always running on your iPhone, which can drain your battery a lot more. So whenever you open a new application on your iPhone, some people mindlessly click on always allow for location, but you actually have to stop and think, does this application need my location all the time? So again, I'd recommend going into location services settings and checking which applications are getting your location all the time. Number five, you need to stop closing all of your Safari tabs individually. So every now and then you'll open up Safari and realize that you have a bunch of tabs open. And the first thing people will do is start swiping one by one to close all of their tabs. But there's actually a much easier way to do this inside of Safari. So on your website view, if you click and hold on the tab icon, there's an option to close all tabs in Safari. So tap on this and everything will be cleared out of Safari. So a much easier way instead of swiping on each one individually. Number six, you need to stop letting your iPhone get too warm. It's really easy for me to say this, but how do you actually act on it? Well, there are a few things that I do and some of them may be a little bit crazy, but here is what I do to prevent my iPhone from getting hot. The first thing is I don't use a case if it's a really hot day. If you have a case on your iPhone, it won't allow the heat to dissipate as the case is going to swallow up all the heat and it's just going to be placed right back onto the backside of your iPhone. The next thing is I try not to charge my iPhone when it's too warm. 
So for example, in my car, I have a dashboard mount and sometimes the sun is shining directly on my phone. And when my phone is really warm in that scenario, I try to avoid charging. There are also other scenarios where I try to just keep my iPhone out of direct sunlight. Now you may laugh at me because this was a bit extreme, but the other day I was at a football game and the sun was shining on me from the right side. And I switched my iPhone from my right pocket to my left pocket just because I didn't want my iPhone to get too warm. I've mentioned this in previous videos, but heat is the number one thing that kills your iPhone's battery health. So the cooler you can keep your iPhone, the better it's gonna be for your battery. Number seven, you need to stop using the default camera settings on your iPhone. Out of the box, if you open up your camera and then start taking photos and videos, you are not maximizing the camera's capability on your iPhone. So there are three things I'd recommend changing inside of camera settings. The first one is your video quality. So default, it's set to 1080p 30fps, and this is to save storage space. However, if you want a much sharper, much smoother looking video, I'd recommend upgrading your camera to 4K 60fps for video. The next setting is called Use Volume Up for Burst. This is turned off by default, but if you turn this on inside the camera app, you're able to press and hold on the Volume Up button, and you can take a burst photo. And then the final setting I'd recommend turning on is called grid. This allows you to compose your photo a lot better. So here is what the camera looks like without the grid. And then if you turn it on, you can see it adds a really simple few lines to your camera app. And this allows you to compose your photos a lot better and get a better looking shot. Number eight, you need to stop pausing and waiting for Siri on your iPhone. So when people trigger Siri, they think that they have to wait for the animation to show up on the iPhone before asking it a question. So I'll give you an example of what most people do, and then I'll show you how you can do this a lot better. Hey Siri, what's the weather today? So in that example, I waited for the animation to show up and that's what most people do. However, you can actually ask Siri a question in one fluid sentence without stopping. Hey Siri, what's the weather today? It's currently clear and six degrees. Today's high so if you do this, this is gonna make interacting with Siri and asking your phone questions a lot faster. Number nine, you need to stop downloading each song manually in Apple Music. So it can be very annoying if you forget to download a song or an album and then you take your iPhone offline and then you're not able to listen to that song. So most people think the only way to download something in Apple Music is to click on the menu icon and then click on download. However, there's a toggle that you can turn on in Apple Music settings, which will download everything automatically for you. So if you go into Apple Music settings, you can turn on automatic downloads. This way, whenever you add a song or an album into your library, it's going to download it automatically to your iPhone. So just as an example here, as I'm browsing Apple Music, if I click the menu icon on this song and click on add to library without clicking on download, as you can see, it's automatically downloading onto my iPhone right there. And finally, at number 10, you need to stop leaving your iPhone on all the time. I'd recommend turning your iPhone completely off at least once per week. Doing this can make the performance on your iPhone a lot better, and it can also clear up some storage space on your iPhone. Because every time you reboot your phone, it's going to clear out all of the cache in some of the applications on your phone. So like I said, every week I try to reboot my phone, sometimes I do it more than that, and it can make the performance on your iPhone a lot better with a fresh reboot. So that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you learned something new. If you guys found this video helpful please give us a like and also if you haven't yet subscribed we are so close to 400,000 subscribers so make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet and help us reach our goal my name is Michael with IDB and I'll see you next time